Hey, what's going on, Who That Nation? It is yours truly, TJ Jones, the host of the State of the Saints podcast. And the State of the Saints podcast is brought to you by DraftKings.com. DraftKings Sportsbook is officially live in Louisiana with mobile sports betting just in time for the big game. Right now, you can place a bet in Louisiana with DraftKings Sportsbook without leaving the comfort of your couch. To add to the excitement, DraftKings is giving new customers a special offer that you don't want to miss. Bet just $5 or more on any playoff game and win $280 in free bets if your team is victorious. The wait is finally over. Head to DraftKings Sportsbook app now to check out all of the DraftKings great promotions and features, including same game parlays. Combine multiple bets from the same game for a bigger payout. The more leg you add, the more money you can make. DraftKings is safe, secure, and reliable. Best of all, you can deposit and withdraw your cash whenever you want. Download the app right now and use the promo code SOTS and get 56 to 1 odds on any team. Bet just $5 or more and win 280 in free bets if your team wins. The promo code, once again, is SOTS this week at DraftKings Sportsbook. You have to be 21 plus, physically represented in Louisiana. Availability varies by parish. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com Sportsbook for further terms and conditions. Licensing partner of Golden Nugget Lake Charles. And if you know anybody with a gambling problem, they can call one 770 stop That's one 770 7867 Now let's start the show. Hey, what's going on, Who That Nation? It is yours truly, TJ Jones, the host of the State of the Saints podcast. And thank you so much for checking out the State of the Saints podcast, where we talk New Orleans Saints. And on this edition, we're going to be talking about the New Orleans Saints head coaching search. And the Saints have interviewed a candidate. And we're also going to be talking about what it takes to be a head coach in the Saints organization in 2022. But let's go ahead and get started. Um, I'm pretty sure a lot of people already heard. And if you have not heard, it's okay. It's fine. People are busy, working, grinding, getting a day-to-day on. That's why I'm here. If you haven't heard, the Saints have interviewed on yesterday. If you're checking this show out on a Monday, on Sunday, the Saints interviewed former Philadelphia Eagles head coach, former Super Bowl winning head coach, Doug Peterson. Doug Peterson uh, was a guy that name was out there uh, for the past couple of weeks. I was one of those people that was really uh, lobbying for this guy to even get an interview. Uh, Doug Peterson was the first coach uh, to be interviewed uh, by the New Orleans Saints since Sean Payton has decided to step down as the head coach. And, you know, a lot of people have issues with Doug Peterson. Many members of the Who That Nation, a lot of them feel like he is not the right fit. A lot of people look at what happened in Philly, uh, how he left Philly, you know, the the situation that happened in that week 17 game, the final game of the season, Philadelphia taking on the Washington football team. Jalen Hurts started the game and he ended up benching Jalen Hurts to start set field, if I'm not mistaken. But he ended up starting set field uh, late in the game. And a lot of people looked at that as a way that the Philadelphia Eagles and Doug Peterson were tanking and it made uh leary the owner of the philadelphia eagles as well as gm howard roseman look extremely bad and because of that he ended up uh getting i won't say getting fired but they just mutually parted ways i think it was a way for both organization and coach to save face he did not coach last season at all he had opportunity to sit out i think it was the best thing that ever happened to doug peterson because 
out of sight, out of mind. And I just think that it gave him an opportunity to try to recharge the batteries. Who that nation? I say that to say this. I know a lot of people may not be on board with Doug Peterson, the way that it ended in Philly. But you have to understand, Philadelphia is a completely different beast. OK, Philadelphia, they, their, their fans are rabid. They're insane in some cases. You know what I'm saying? They, they have zero tolerance for anything that is media uh, that resembles mediocrity which really doesn't make sense because if you think about the Philadelphia Eagles team, they've been dripped and dipped in mediocrity for I don't know how long. They've been close, but uh, yet so far, close but no cigars. But yet the fan base continues to be impatient. And Doug Peterson, who brought this team a Super Bowl for the first time, what, since uh, they were in the NFL? And they turned their backs on him a couple of years later, saying that they wanted him out of the door. A lot of people felt that Doug Peterson uh, did not, uh, you know, coach the team well, that he lost the locker room. I think a lot of that stuff you have to uh, chunk up to the fact that the Philadelphia media are bulldogs. OK, if they smell any type of blood in the water, guess what? They're trying to devour any meat that they can actually find. All right. So Philadelphia media market is absolutely crazy. You know what I'm saying? They're going to try to find something. And I feel like when you combine that with the national sports media, ESPN, Fox Sports, constantly talking about them, you have no choice but to put that in your mind that maybe this guy isn't the right fit. But I can tell you something. Doug Peterson is one heck of a coach. If we're looking for somebody to develop a quarterback, look no further than Doug Peterson. As much as people try to talk about Carson Wentz, his best years were under Doug Peterson. And some people would probably say, well, you know, Frank Wright was the offensive coordinator and he was the quarterback guru. He was the one that was helping Carson Wentz along the way. That may be. But at the same time, there would be no Frank Wright in the Philadelphia Eagles organization if Doug Peterson didn't bring him there. And you also can look at the fact that after Frank Wright became the head coach of the Indianapolis coach, the, the Philadelphia Eagles still went to the divisional round of the playoffs where they played the New Orleans Saints and were a what a, a final drive away and a Marshawn Lattimore interception away from actually taking a lead in that game. There would not be a controversial nine call if uh, Alshon Jeffries would have caught that pass and Marshawn Lattimore didn't catch that interception. So the fact that people are saying that this guy can't coach, the fact that they're saying that this guy is a team obliterator, the fact that they're saying that this guy may not have what it takes to be a head coach with the New Orleans Saints, all I have to say is to you is, that's completely laughable. Look, we love Sean Payton and a Who That Nation. I love Sean Payton. You love Sean Payton. But let's just be real about this Who That Nation. It's not like Sean Payton brought the New Orleans Saints five, six Super Bowls here. He has the same amount of Super Bowl victories as Doug Peterson. And to be honest with you, it was in the same amount of time, basically. No, I take that back. Actually, it was a few years earlier for Doug Peterson. So they have the same amount of Super Bowls on their resume both of these guys are known for their coaching style and actually developing quarterbacks, right? You have Sean Payton, who helped catapult uh, Drew Brees' career. Uh, Jameis was looking pretty good before he went down with ACL. You had uh, Doug Peterson with Carson Wentz, arguably playing in a, at an MVP level back in 2017. He goes down. Nick Foles comes in. All he does is become Super Bowl MVP and can't play quarterback. Uh, for anybody else but the Philadelphia Eagles and Doug Peterson, all I'm saying is Doug Peterson is a really good coach. Now, I'm not saying that the Saints should hire him, but if they did, I wouldn't be mad at the situation. I wouldn't be mad as everybody else because, quite frankly, I look at the whole situation, okay? I think that it, it takes more than trying to keep a team together to make a guy a head coach, and that's what a lot of Saints fans are doing here today. They want Dennis Allen. They don't want Dennis Allen because they feel like he's the right fit. They don't want Dennis Allen because of his coaching style. They want Dennis Allen because they're afraid of change. And they feel like too much change coming to the Saints organization will call for the Saints to blow up and we go back to the dark ages. A lot of you probably don't even remember. But I believe in this coaching staff. I believe in his front office. Just like guys like Mickey Loomis found Sean Payton, they're capable of doing it again. Just like guys like Jeff Ireland, uh, find these diamonds in the rough in the NFL draft. They will continue to do that again. 
just like Kai Harley, a guy who has done a great job, outstanding job at managing the books, they're going to do that again. So I think that we need to trust Mickey Loomis and the staff that they have together in the front office for the New Orleans Saints. And if Doug Peterson just so happened to be the guy that they select, we need to go ahead and go for it. But Doug Peterson isn't the only guy that the Saints plan to interview. Of course, we know about Aaron Glenn, the now defensive coordinator and former secondary coach uh, of the New Orleans Saints. Uh, now he's the defensive coordinator of the Detroit Lions. He will get an interview on Wednesday. Uh, Dennis Allen will finish up the week. He will get himself an interview. And also Brian Flores is on the agenda for a possible interview with the New Orleans Saints. So those are some really good coaches that they have lined up. Uh, we all know that a lot of people feel like Dennis Allen is the top guy. Some people feel like Brian Flores is the top guy. But whoever the Saints choose, I just hope that they come in with a, a brand new culture. OK, I, I want them to come in and I want them to be able to bring what they have to the table. Not trying to be like Sean Payton, not just trying to reserve Sean Payton coaching staff. If you feel like you have somebody that can be a little bit better. Look. That comes with the territory, who that nation. I know we're so afraid of change at times. We're afraid that somebody going to come in and mess everything up. But the Saints didn't make the playoffs this season. Yeah, they fought and scratched and clawed their way to, uh, you know, towards the end of the season for a play-in game and a, a San Francisco loss. But at the end of the day, they did not make the playoffs, okay? They didn't make the playoffs. They didn't make multiple Super Bowls. So this team has to find a way in order for them to even get to that point. And I think that whoever you choose, you have to understand one thing, okay? You have to understand that this guy is going to bring what he feel is the right culture to the New Orleans Saints organization. But I think that that guy also needs to be a team builder. See, a lot of us are, are pointing at Dennis Allen because we're looking at him keeping the staff where it is right now. But what about two years from now? What about three years from now? Do you not understand that when you start to win, when you start to become successful, teams are looking at your organization and they are trying to take away some of the things that made you successful. They are trying to get a little bit of that good luck that you've been having over the last couple of years. So when teams start to win, that's when you start to see offensive coordinators get head coaching jobs. That's when you start to get position coaches become coordinators. I mean, that's what happens. OK, so what's going to happen? When the Saints begin to become successful, can a guy like Dennis Allen build a team? Can he pick up where that particular coordinator at that particular skill uh, coach left off? Can you replace him with the right person? Can you investigate and look and scout and say, man, this is the best guy, not only on the field, but off the field and in the locker room? See, it's way more than just keeping a team intact and trying to preserve a coaching staff. We have to understand that it's not just about the 2022 season. It's about 2022 and beyond. So who is going to be that right choice? Whoever the Saints decide, hopefully they bring in a culture that can be sustainable and not just for 2022, but from years down the road. But I would love to hear from you. What do you all think about Doug Peterson becoming a head coaching candidate for the New Orleans Saints? Do you think that he would be a good fit for the Saints? Who do you feel like would be the right choice to coach the New Orleans Saints for the future? Comment down below, like, and share this video. This has been the State of the Saints podcast brought to you by DraftKings.com and also Manscaped.com. Use that promo code State of Saints and you will save 20% off of all of your Manscaped purchases. Previous episodes of the State of the Saints podcast is available on iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Anchor FM. Don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoy the content and also check out the State of the Saints podcast on the Pigskin Podcast Network. Till next time, all I got to say is.